So this is a semi-beginner's tutorial for how to set up a programming environment on a Mac just to get you started. And this is going to be good for PHP, MySQL, that kind of thing. Uh, this is a little too much that you need to do if you're just doing JavaScript and client-side languages, but if you're doing PHP, this is something you should do. So there's three applications that you really should get uh, if you're going to start doing this. And that's going to be Cyberduck, Text Wrangler, and MAMP. And I'll go through each one of these. Cyberduck is basically an FTP client that's going to allow you to connect to your host, to your website, and upload and download files. So very helpful. Uh, Barebones Text Wrangler is a straight text editor. You can get other programs that cost money, such as Dreamweaver, and that give you hints. However, if you don't type out the codes, you're not going to learn them. So better off getting a straight text editor, and Text Wrangler is a really great one. MAMP is similar to WAMP for Windows. It stands for Macintosh, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And basically what it does is turns your computer into a server. So very useful, and that will allow you to edit all your PHP files locally. So let's take a look at each of the applications. So starting off with CyberDuck. CyberDuck has a very clean interface. It's very simple. Uh, all it is is you have an open connection button. You can fill in all the information as you will here, your server, your port, your username, password, and some paths if you need to. Usually it's just this type of information. You can also SSH with this or uh, SFTP if you need to. So you have a lot of options with CyberDuck. This is a really simple application, but you can do a lot with it. For now, all we're ever going to use it for is just downloading and uploading files. The next application is Text Wrangler, which is a very, very useful application. It's got a ton of... Uh, of text options. So if you go to edit text options, it's going to give you all the languages you can get. So uh, as you're typing in different languages, PHP and anything really, it'll start syntax highlighting for you. And I just think it's a very neat application. It doesn't give you code hints, but again, like I said, if you're not typing it out fully, then you'll never learn it. So it's a very good habit to get into to actually type everything out. And Text Wrangler does a great job. It lists all your files that you're going to have over here, and you'll see this populate as we move on. But for now, there's your Text Wrangler. Next application is called MAMP, and MAMP installation is very straightforward. It's so far the easiest server I've found. Now, Mac OS X does actually come with Apache. You have to enable it. It does not come with PHP, although you can get it very simply. And actually, don't quote me on that, it might, but uh, this MAMP was the easiest to get. Basically, all it does is turn on your Apache server and your MySQL server. So, the first thing that you need to do is set up some shortcuts for yourself. So, to get to MAMP, to get to the stuff in MAMP, uh, your com your entire computer after MAMP is not a server. You actually have to uh, have all your files in a certain folder, and that's usually your root folder. So in your computer, you're going to go to your applications, which is right here, and then you're going to go to MAMP, which is M -M -M -M, MAMP, uh, right here. So MAMP, open that up, and then there's going to be a lot of README files located in red here, so you can read those at your will, but they're all basically telling you to put your files in HDDocs. HDDocs is this folder right here, and if you're wondering how it knows to use that, if you pull up the MAMP interface, go to Preferences and Apache, uh, it's actually telling you document root slash application slash MAMP slash HDDocs. So right there, it's letting you know what's up. So hit OK, minimize that for now, and it's going to refresh the servers. But for now, that's fine. So what we want to do is put all of our files that we're going to use in HDDocs. Now, before we actually go in here and start editing, one of the things that you really should do is set up shortcuts. So as you can see here, I have a shortcut up here in my finder for HDDocs and a shortcut over here for HDDocs. This is going to make things really quick for you to actually get going. So for me, I'll just hold Apple to get rid of these on both ends. Okay, so I can show you... I guess I have to... yeah. So... And I can show you how to put them in there. So you take HDDocs and just drag it up here, and you hold it between two of the icons, like that. Kind of tricky, actually. There you go. It'll open a space with a plus sign, drop it in there, and then HDDocs, you drag that down here underneath, and drop it when you get the blue line. There you go. Now what this is going to allow you to do is not only will this be here for your Finder window at all times, but it will also be in your sidebar. Also, if you're opening up a save dialog box, then your folder will also be in the save dialog box. So very quick shortcuts. So instead of HDDocs so far, all I have is three folders that I have, and I'll be actually saving a file here in a second. So let's take a look at how you can tell if PHP is working now. So with Text Wrangler open, we're going to type in some simple PHP code, and don't worry if you don't understand, we're going to go through this step by step uh, eventually. But for now, you're going to open your PHP code with bracket question mark PHP and close it with question mark bracket. 
All you're going to type in is echo php info, which is a built-in PHP command for echoing out or for printing out to the screen all the PHP information. So now we're going to go to File, Save As, and then we go to the sidebar, and there's our htdocs folder that we had before. So this wasn't here before. If we didn't put it in the sidebar, we'd actually have to go through all the MAMP folders to get to it. So very nice that it's there now. And just call it info.php, and then hit Save. So now that we're good there, you can see that Text Wrangler has recognized it and is now syntax highlighted for us. So the next thing we can do is open up our web browser and we'll go to that folder. Now I actually have my ports set up for Apache to be a little bit different than usual. Usually it's port 80 and port uh, 3306 for MySQL. So we can actually check that here if you don't know what I'm saying. In the preferences, you go to ports and you check your ports here, Apache port and MySQL port. Okay, so just keep these in mind as you'll need these as you're configuring things, but for now, just know what they are and know how to get to them. So you get to them by the preferences interface and then the ports tab. So my Apache port is 8888, so cancel and minimize that. So now what I can do is when I go to my web browser, I'm going to go to localhost, which is my machine, colon, the port, which is <clears throat> 8888. Now for yours, if you're on Windows using WAMP, it's probably going to be a port 80, but again, I can make this whatever I wanted. So I'll just delete that and go here, and you'll see what happens. I get a listing of files, okay? So now I have a listing. I want to choose my info.php file that I created earlier. So I'll click on that, and it's actually loading. So if, it, if the servers were not running, then you would just see straight text. So let me actually show you what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and open uh, MAMP, and we'll go ahead and turn uh, Apache off here. Uh, we'll stop servers. So now I'll go ahead and pull up that, uh, that folder in the web browser and see what it looks like. So we'll go to htdocs and we'll open up info.php in the web browser without, PHP, without Apache turned on. And you can see, da, 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 da. you can see here, there we go, underneath here. You can see info.php has simply just echoed out the text that's in the file. So if your server's not running, this is what happens to PHP. This is what allows us to actually have server-side code running our machine, is that MAMP machine. So now, what we can do is work with a little MySQL. So let's take a look at MySQL. So once our servers are turned back on and MySQL is running, again, we can just simply test out that real quick by going to our info.php file. There we go, it's working. So now what we want to do is check out phpMyAdmin. Now what phpMyAdmin is, is really just a... MySQL tool, and it's very useful. You can do ev you can do everything in PHP MyAdmin in code, if you wanted to. So you go to the MAMP page, which is just your local host colon the port for Apache slash MAMP, and then this will be filled out automatically for you. But it's question mark language equals English. So choose PHP MyAdmin from the list here, and that's going to lo load up the interface. We will go through this step by step later. Don't get confused by it, but PHP MyAdmin is the standard across the board. Many websites use it, and in fact, your server probably, if you're using one, uses it on their server too. So, what we can do is I'll show you just how, if this is your server, on your not on your machine, but on your website's machine, what you can do is actually open up PHP MyAdmin and go to a SQL database, say the site one here, okay, and then export it as a file. So imagine right now that I'm actually on the server, not actually on my machine. So I'll go to export, and I'll give a bunch of options here. A lot of things are going on. Ignore everything. Select all. Make sure all your tables are selected. Just ignore everything. Go down to the very bottom. Save as file. Make sure you check this box. Ignore all the options, and hit go. Now it's going to be exporting that file for us, and it's going to give us a name. And underscore or dash one means I already have one. Dot SQL, and that's actually to my downloads folder. That's where I put it. So I'll take that out of my downloads folder and throw it off to the side here. Okay, so here's our SQL file. Now, we go back to our local machine in phpMyAdmin, and now we want to create a new database and put this information in it. So basically what we're doing here is taking the information from our server, our live web server, and putting it on our local machine so we can use it later on. So we'll go back to localhost, and we'll create a new database. We'll call this one 410 underscore site2, so we don't overwrite the one we already have, and hit create. Now that our database is created, just go to import right here and choose file. Go to our desktop and choose the SQL file that we exported. Hit choose and hit go. Now it's done. That's all you got to do. So now your website's all set up and now that MySQL's ready, your database is ready, and PHP is ready, and your server's ready, you can begin 
editing your website locally so that you get quick results and you can start your development environment.